Now let's look again at the quote we saw at the introduction of technological organization from the shape of things to come. The existence of independent sovereign states is war, white or red, and only an elaborate miseducation blinded the world to this elementary fact. Red and white are representative colors of the technocracy incorporated monad that represents the balance between resources and production. This fits very well with the context of the quote as many wars are waged over the Earth's resources like oil, gas, diamonds, food amongst other things to satisfy domestic consumption. It further works when you also consider, for example, that wars have also been engineered to keep the American military-industrial complex in a high state of production over many decades. Furthermore, Technocracy Incorporated was formed a little before the shape of things to come so H.G. Wells would have the opportunity to be familiar with the concept. Now you might say all of this about the monad is coincidence. Perhaps but as you think that please ponder the following quote by Franklin D. Roosevelt American 32nd U.S. President and 33 degree Freemason. In politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, you can bet it was planned that way. Let's now look further into their teachings from Wikipedia. On the Wikipedia page about Technocracy Incorporated we find the following text The organization argues that developments in mechanization have caused a massive shift of employment towards the service sector and that money creation and distribution jobs such as banking, insurance, etc. could be eliminated with the use of energy accounting. Technocracy Incorporated proposes a non-market economic system called energy accounting, which uses a post-scarcity type of economy as its basis. The technate design as projected, would include such post-scarcity aspects as free housing urbanates, transportation, recreation, and education. In other words free everything, including all consumer products, as a right of citizenship. Energy is used as an accounting system in this proposal and not a reward or punishment societal mechanism because some view money as being an unreliable tool of measurement as regards social and ecological concerns, this alternative concept could replace money in the future. Ok let's stop here. So from this we can see another plank in the Venus Project technological organization model. Namely the elimination of money. Let's read on to find out more. Within a market system, however, Increased productivity often leads to downsizing because companies need fewer workers, and also lower wages because of job competition. These conditions reduce purchasing power in a price system, which makes that system ultimately untenable in a technological society, or so goes that argument. Now, clearly from what we have read it is very clear that both Technocracy and Technocracy Incorporated are governmental entities and that the Venus Project Technological Organization resembles key facets of approach to economic matters. In fact much of what we have heard could have been scripted for the Zeitgeist addendum film. If you add what we have seen previously in the film The Shape of Things to Come and compare fresco hostility towards nationalism to that shown in the movie as well as similarities between the Everytown Utopia and the Venus Project amongst other things we would have to conclude, if we are being honest, that the Venus Project is a technocracy. Yet despite this fresco denies that he is promoting a technocracy and he even mentions on the Venus Project website, very proudly, that they are beyond politics. One person who is critical of Zeitgeist addendum yet a self-confessed supporter of technocracy is Edward L. Winston who states, The Venus Project, in essence, is technocracy, which you can learn about on Wikipedia and at the Technocratic Movement's website. The only difference between the two is how Jake Fresco and Technocracy Incorporated thought production should be tracked. A concept so small and unimportant it's a shame, to me anyway that Jake Fresco is no longer a member of Technocracy Incorporated. In other words, the Venus Project is essentially a technocracy and that the Venus Project is an alternative government to nation-states. Therefore, that would make the Zeitgeist Movement, the activist arm of the Venus Project, a political organization. 
it now seemed that things have tipped beyond a certain point on the scales as to the question whether technological organization is a political entity. At one point, whilst I was conducting this research, I was willing to give Fresco the benefit of the doubt as to whether he was leading people on. Now at this point, he is beginning to look as slippery as Peter Joseph. The question that remains is why would they deny that the Venus Project was a technocracy, a potential alternative government? On the surface, a technocracy seems like a good thing with no work, no money, amongst other things. I propose the following reasons. 1. Part of that answer may lie in technocracy incorporated itself, the organization that Fresco left. On Wikipedia I find the following about itself. The North American Technate is a design and plan to transform North America into a technocratic society. The plan includes using Canada's rich deposits of minerals and hydroelectric power as a complement to the United States' industrial and agricultural capacity. Many of the details of this plan are presented in the Technocracy Study course. The North America Technate would be composed of all of North America, Central America, the Caribbean, parts of South America and Greenland, encompassing some 30 modern nations as well as numerous non-self-governing territories. If the technate were set up today, it would contain nearly 600 million citizens and its total land area would be over 26 million square k and making it the largest nation on earth. Its territorial claims would stretch from the North Pole in the north, to the equator in the south and from the Caribbean in the east to the international dateline in the Pacific Ocean, to the West. In other words, what they are proposing to set up is a super-technological state called the Technate that would end the sovereignty of the United States, Canada and a number of different countries. For Zeitgeist and the Venus Project to be associated with technocracy would draw attention to these detailed plans which blatantly oppose the nation-states of North America, amongst others. This would make a reality the technocracy of wings of the world as we saw previously in the shape of things to come. It also sounds like part of a plan for world government that the New World Order have been working towards for centuries. 2. Another reason is that technocracy can, potentially, be designed in a way that that its system of governance is an authoritarian system. On the Wikipedia it reads as follows. Technocracy can also refer to a system of governance in which laws are enforced by designing the system such that it is impossible to break them. For instance, to prevent people from riding a tram without paying, the carriage's doors could be designed in such a way that a payment was required to open the doors. The same idea can be applied on much larger scales with automated public surveillance by semi-intelligent systems that automatically control or limit the actions of individuals to prevent illegal activity. This is called the carceral state, in which the whole state is effectively a panopticon, a prison with strict rules, where all individuals are supervised to ensure compliance. Author Charles Strauss called this a panopticon singularity. In this way, the bureaucratic form of technocracy may be an authoritarian system of governance. This could explain why Fresco envisions a society without police and prisons. The technology will ensure that it is not possible. What seems missing is the detail with Fresco and as we know the devil is always in the detail. 3. Perhaps the most damning reason why Fresco does not want to be associated with the word technocracy or political is because it's links to the Enlightenment movement, the occult and Marxism. For this point I will be drawing on automated opposition, the technocratic undercurrent of Zeitgeist addendum by Paul and Philip D. Collins, December 1, 2008. The dialectical ploy of Zeitgeist addendum becomes painfully apparent when one examines the normative social and political theories presented in the film. A consistently reiterated theme throughout Zeitgeist addendum is the notion that social progress is inextricably linked to scientific and technological progress. Such a contention is vintage techno-utopianism, the belief that technology will eventually end all social evils and give rise to a perfect society techno-utopianism, Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia.